Good evening. Hello, Miss Bonnie. Does Miss Karina have a new hairstyle? <laughs> nope, just go. Okay. I noticed it though. We'll start the uh, October 25th, 2022 work session. <clears throat> right. So we got the minutes, the minutes from October 11th uh, regular session, October 11th work session, and the discussions. I sent a note to uh, the city manager in uh, I will assent in the last uh, meetings, but the minutes doesn't reflect that. It say I attended the meeting, so we need to correct that. Police Department day to day, uh, for the most part. <clears throat> so some of these have been, have been formally sworn in, you know, like in a back room after the Kennedy assassination. Um, but there, there will be some some formal where you can have some pictures with your family and other types of things. And, you know, where we actually have a uniform that fits each year and have to borrow one from the back. Um, so there's a series of those um, and, and some promotions, and we'll wait for that. Um, Firefighter men, 15 years of service. That's, that's pretty cool. As long as we're having a discussion about fire department, you want to tell us about the fire? Uh, sure. <coughs> Mayor, council members, residents. Uh, Sunday night, uh, I don't know how exactly what time, it was maybe 8 or 9 o'clock. Uh, we had a call for the first fire on Harvey Woods Drive. Uh, we arrived and found a small fire in the kitchen. It was started by grease uh, on the cooktop that was left unattended. Uh, it spread up to the cabinets just a little bit, uh, but the, the house structure itself was never really involved. Uh, we went in with a water extinguisher and put it out with maybe a gallon or two of water. Uh, set up a fan to get the smoke out of the house, and uh, the resident did not have any smoke alarms. So we carry those on all of our trucks. We installed one for them. Uh, Chief Piper went back yesterday to install a couple more, but they were not home, so he's going to follow up tomorrow with them on that. And uh, we're going to try to do a blitz in that neighborhood in the next week or so, give out some smoke arms. Um, so that was about it. It was uh, handled quickly and efficiently. So. Sweet. Well, thank you. And Cherry said it doesn't even look like the windows are damaged. They're not, they're not, they're not, they, I mean, we were only there maybe 30, 45 minutes at the most, and they went back in, and everything was fine. What that big? Um, smoke alarms, and we remind everybody we've got them here. We've got seal alarms. We give out if you know anybody that needs to smoke or seal alarm, please contact us or have them contact us. We just got over 200 batteries from every Chief Piper filled out an online thing for fire departments to request batteries, we have nine volts and no lakes, we can go out and install batteries, come here and get batteries, whatever, but we don't want anybody to do it on the smoke alarm. Thank you, sir. Question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Question, question. You put the fire out with what? A water extinguisher. We call them a water can. It's just but, a uh, two and a half gallon water extinguisher. The grease? Grease? No, the grease had burned out. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, it was just the cabinet up above there. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
That's not what you told oh, us. Oh, you're going to sell them in That's not what I've learned. That's right. <laughs> and, 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 and had the grease been there, uh, what would we have put it out with? Well, uh, dry chemical signature <laughs> is what we would use. Yes. I'm just saying. There's actually a picture of it on the police department. It shows the little fire. Inside. Good. Good. All right. Next item, we're, we're, we've gotten on the agenda. We've also got it on the, um, the work session discussion. The, the, the actual um, you know, potential to vote on it will actually be deferred uh, until the next council meeting. However, while we have everybody here, including Mr. Sanchez, um, I do want to talk about it. You know, we got the time, so let's let's just kind of look at the whys, um, how we're going to actually make this work. And <coughs> Mr. Sanchez lives over in Foxcroft and uh, has been there for a while, and uh, they have an interest in, in a restaurant space, and uh, I think they have the ability to pull it off. Uh, but you know, uh, in, the, in the boardroom back there, we have drawings. Oh, I can pull them up, yeah. Right. But does that work for you? But at least discuss it. We won't oh, sure. I can pull it. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about it. we got a couple of seconds. Let's, let's, everybody's in the ring. We might as well you know, enjoy ourselves just a touch. You want uh, you want us to get them up on the screen? Can you give uh, them? So that, um, I don't know where we dispute to. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. You weren't were standing by your post over here, so I was going to you. Uh, can you get on base camp on that? Please pull them up. Sir? No, I, just, I get worried about those. No, I always look at my phone. I said, well, you usually in the middle. He's hiding from you. He's hiding from you. He's hiding from you. We can pull those up. Did you want to speak? have Mr. Sanchez? Well, we're going to have Mr. Sanchez speak too, but uh, while you're pulling it up, we'll, we'll talk to the people. Come on up. Yeah. If I can show you. Sorry, so obviously we have a building, and it's an expensive building. And, you know, we got to have a, a, a use for it. You know, the demand for restaurant <coughs> space in this city now is very high. There's a couple spaces left, even the lease if you want to take. And they're at some, some pretty high levels. Um, you know, we've looked and had multiple conversations with multiple people, most of the time related to either the district or, you know, just some generic space in the city. Um, but in this particular case, you know, we, we, he's got a unique background, so I'm going to let him kind of explain his vision. And then we'll get into some construction and some other ideas in terms of what we think that's going to cost to make it So, we know who you are, uh, but tell us a little bit about, you know, I know you're not going to name it John, so you're going to have to have some idea out there. Um, but tell us what you got. Oh, the name is still up in there a little bit. It's between uh, La Familia and uh, Tita's Cafe. And the cafe, we want to make like a, you know, more like Cuban, Puerto Rican uh, coffee shop. Um, kids can go in there. I mean, I have total Wi Fi. Um, it's uh, pastries, coffee, stuff that they don't like. So, you know, we get a lot down south, Miami on the front, but here we don't have anything like that. So, trying to get something different in this area. Excellent. And so, your wife would be the operator? Oh, yes. <laughs> <They could. laughs> that works. I, I haven't tried your coffee. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to, but I'm over here drinking normal coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm bringing some tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing Cuban travels. coffee or cats up to if you're not careful. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's different types. So, and then really, there's other places here in, in Georgia, in, in Atlanta and stuff. They kind of put a different twist on it. They put their own, you know, they kind of Americanize it. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep it original, you know, from, you know, from my family. So what, what, what's the Cuban place down there in Stockbridge? Poppies or Poppies. something? Poppies. Yeah, Poppies. But <laughs> it may not be at the level you're talking about, right. but at least it's something that people can put right, in mind, right? Right, like that, right. And be able to say, you know, Americanized, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's a it's a pretty solid, you know, little operation there. They've, right. They've, they've got more than one location in Atlanta. Right. Um, and, you know, pretty reasonable place to eat there as long as that. So we're just saying we're doing it. I tried it. Right. It's like, the bread is not like original Cuban bread. So, I mean, you know, the steak is like chopped steak. It's not supposed to be chopped steak. You know, steak sandwich comes with steak and then, you know, lettuce, tomatoes, and, and, and breadsticks. You know, some, it's something so simple, and then they try to 
they change it up to for everybody else to, and it's not original. You know, we want to stick to original, and then you know that'll that'll show everybody else how it's supposed to be. You know, uh, when I first came to Atlanta, I went and got a Cuban sandwich from a place I forgot where it was, right downtown. But a Cuban sandwich, they put lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles on. I said, Cuban sandwich, we're gonna have lettuce, tomatoes, you know. They kind of, I don't know, but I asked the people, hey, why do you cook it like that? They said, well, they like it like that. I said, well, it's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> you know, you cook the way you cook it, and if you like it, it's fine. If not, you know, basically, you know, I just like sticking to, you know, original. Original. Let's do an original, if not, you know. And I think with the original, you know, anybody that does see it, like myself or anybody else that knows or comes from Florida or, you know, New York, you know, different places, but, you know, it's, the original is the, probably the best that there is. So, I mean, I want everybody to try it. And I, I guarantee you, you know, you know, like, so. We do the coffees, they switch up the coffees, and I'm like, why switch up the coffees? It's good, you know, you know. And well, questions from the council, we'll ask that. This time. Yeah. I know when you read something about the coffee. Ms. Turner. Well, I'm glad that we have a local a resident that interested in opening a business and chose uh, the um, local case. And, um, I like the idea. Um, one thing that I don't know if you're aware of it is that uh, the location doesn't have this sufficient pocket. Right, I'm aware of that. But a lot of stuff now, like yeah, I even heard Starbucks is starting up. They don't want to do too much in the, you know, the in their in their building. They want people to just come through. And one of the, I don't know, if it's, I don't know if it's on this drawing, but um, down south there's a lot of there's windows on the outside where you get your coffee and you just go. So it's more like come and go, get your stuff and go. Now the I know the, I'm aware of the parking, and we're trying to figure out what else to do with that. But um, we have a lot of ideas in our head as far as bringing people like from the school. From the university, having like a shuttle that kids can actually come over there and study, have coffees, you know, try something different. And then, you know, later on in the evenings, also, you know, I want to try to get it that, you know, a little crowd and go over there and relax and have uh, mimosas and, and, you know, relax, you know, something adult, you know, not for kids. You know. I mean, not. For the crazy kids. <laughs> oh, that's a crazy kid. Right there, she's a daiquiri lady. I am. Yeah, daiquiri stuff like that. That's, you know, it's all anything. It's just gonna be a lot of flavors, but you know, it's gonna be. I just want to keep it original. It's gonna be, you know, it'll be a good thing, you know. And, and I don't want to do it in a different place because I live here. And I want to do it here. I could, I, I could have gone somewhere else, but I don't want to do that. And I. I agree with you with the parking, and we kind of talked about the lot next door for overflow parking, and maybe you know, taking, helping the, the owner of that out to you know, accommodate. But mostly, it'll be a lot of people just coming in and out, or people when maybe later on in the evening just come and hang out and have coffee and still you know, have a, a drink or so. And then the back patio is excellent for something like that. You know, so. It's 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 all around good deal, you know. I'm not looking for a thousand people to go there, but I want people to get something good and fresh. You know? That's not from around here, you know. We try, we eat and drink, you know, everything from around this neighborhood. So, you know, we're familiar with everybody else's his place and everybody else's place. But um, and my daughter loves like bubble teas and all that, and I would accommodate for that too. But I don't, I don't want to take from them. That's their thing. We want to do our thing, and then everybody enjoy it. Mr. Thank you for your passion and your time. No problem. Yes, uh, it's a very cool thing that, uh, you know, I'm more well known for uh, the rest of the city and, you know, different people and different kind of food. And it's, 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 it's cool to have, you know, to bring out the culture. I mean, I like the idea of keeping it uh, original. Yeah. You, you saying that uh, pastry and coffee only no food? Pastry, no, they're food. <laughs> Definitely food. But sense. mostly, those are like stuff that people just come. Well, let's say they're going to work in the morning, they stop for coffee, pastries. It, it's more, if you're from, if you've ever been to South Florida, that's like a thing. You know, mm -hmm. you pick up your coffee, your pastries, and you go to work. Okay. Maybe in the evenings, or I mean, uh, for lunch, you come in, you have lunch. Maybe lunch, dinners, everything. You know, it's going to be food, but 
mostly it's like, you know, because of, mostly because of parking, you know, it's in and out, people come, pick up something to eat, coffee, get the road. I mean, well, we do it all the time, so. That's a, it's, a, it's a great location and a great uh, building and great visibility. Great building, yeah. but it's the only thing is the pocket, so if you can accommodate something. Yeah. Like I think that one is going to be great for you. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I say maybe with the university, the kids over there become some kind of shuttle that when kids want to come, they come and study. Because it'll be kind of like a, it's going to be, it's going to be cute, but it's going to be like kind of like a Barnes & Noble with uh, Starbucks, like everything mixed. That kind of environment for people to come and do their thing and still be able to eat something original and something different from here. We also have like the hotels that surround that area as well that, you know, they, they don't have to necessarily drive there. They can they walk there, you know, and you have that backup and option too. Okay, well, I see a lot of people like, well, kind of a uh, uh, cracker barrel beat us to the punch with the mimosas because now they're drinking, I have mimosas and beer and stuff for wine. <laughs> but we were trying to, you know, get in there before that. So well, it looks like the wine's going to be sold at the dollar store here in just a minute. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the mimosas, <laughs> she, she had a mimosa the other day from, uh, it wasn't really that good either. <laughs> from, from cracker barrel. It came out of a regular cup. It tasted like puree, like they just yeah. strawberry puree, that's what it tastes like. Well, they can't make it. They got to pour it out of a container. So yeah. That yeah. is a promise. So that's why we're just, everything has to be original. If, if I can't do an original, I'm not original. I'm going to do it. I have to do an original. It has to be, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people like it. I'm sure a lot of people like it. And because I'm from South Florida, that's, that's all we have. That's all we have. In there. We just don't have it here. The closest thing is maybe Poppy's, there's another one called Mami La Cubana, which is in, uh, what is that, College Park, I think it is? Not too far away. And I went there and I saw the kitchen and it was disgusting. I was like, wait a minute. It looked like they were doing it in the back patio. We working in the back patio. I was like, never come back here again. <laughs> but the same thing, it's just, you know, contains, there's, you know, different foods. We have a whole, a whole list of kind of different foods that are different meals that are going to be selling there. Ms. Dorothy. Um, yes, um, I love Cuban bread. So tell me, where do you get your bread? Do you make it? Do you get we'll it? We make it here, but I've been having a ship from Miami. Oh, really? Yeah, and it goes yeah. fast. And so, well, the next shipment comes, I'll make sure you guys try it. I'll bring it for everybody. Okay. And the pastries and everything. Okay. But I have, I have, I will be making them here. We just, this have to have the right oven, the right stuff to do it. Right so okay. it's just okay. at home, it's not really a good place to make it. So, okay. but we, I. I I uh, actually do cabinets in the schools and hospitals up here, and the truck driver comes from Miami, so he brings the whole shipment okay. every time he comes up. Except for the coffee, I make that fresh shit, okay. Okay. which I can bring you different types, all, all the ones that we'll be selling, and have you guys try it. Maybe I just come next week. Are you guys gonna have another meeting next week? Or, uh, two weeks from now. Two weeks from now. Well, we can always <laughs> in between, you know, if you wanna bring it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Coffee doesn't hurt my feelings at all. I'll let you try it on. Yeah, because there's cafe con leche, there's coffee, there's regular, what's just express, they have espresso, and then they have uh, uh, cotaito, which is coffee with a little bit of milk. And they're all different types, but you know, they all. I'm a little lethargic. Which one should I drink? Cotaito. Cotaito. If you like, you like it strong? I mean, there's espresso, which is straight cute coffee. And then they have the one with a little bit of milk and sugar. And the other one's, it's very sweet, but it's the milk with a little bit of coffee. Keep it going. When I say a little bit of coffee, it's, it's strong. It's not, yeah. So yeah. I, I heard something about the um, in, in Cuba. Is that where you're, you're getting your coffee from? The Cuban yeah. coffee? There's nothing like right. nothing really comes from Cuba. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's really like Colombian coffee. It's, uh, yeah. There's Bustelo and there's Pilon. Those are two different brands. Usually, Bustelo is the one that, when you when you get into a, a, a like a restaurant and stuff like that, they they're the ones that you know give you higher you know commercial commercial uh, co coffees and all that. So sounds good. Um, just to um, continue something that your wife said about uh, people walking, you know that that was something that we had uh, discussions about for years is to have more walkability here in the city. So this is a place where people can, you know, that live on both sides, you know, town can actually, you know, hop yeah. on the pathway system, walk through there and cut over here and 
be there, you know. Definitely. So that's that's something we, we need to start, you know. I mean, see, I see now, I mean, we, we go, we go, we frequent the restaurants there, walk the house, stuff like that. We sit there and we just, I just sit there and watch and see what people do. And a lot, a lot more people walk than, than what, I, what I thought, you know, and then I see a lot of people like, say, well, that place is great because it's right on 75. Mm -hmm. Anybody's going to go 75 north or south, it's going to drive right by. So what about, what about, you know, um, freeway traffic? You know, how are you going to bring people off the freeway? Oh, are you the, gonna, the huge sign is there. That, 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 that uh, to accommodate that. Oh, yeah. Well, the sign plus, uh, I get you, the building, I mean, it's, it stands out no matter what. The uplighting, the way the building looks, to, you know, we just add like some more uh, uh, theme lighting in the back, you know, the patio. And uh, it, it, it can be seen, it, it, you can see it. And, and then I want people to see it and then they're going to feel it. Because the way we're making, the way we're making is they're gonna feel it. So you've been a problem with your, you know, your brother, you know, not your brother, but your your friend is like your brother. No, he's my brother. Yeah, my, he's really my stepbrother. But yeah, he's my brother. But yeah, he, uh, he, he he's, he's coming up. He's coming up here too. So okay. I mean, all my family's little by little. Her her sister and my niece moved up. Yeah. We have a lot of family coming up, and then uh, my sons are all here. You know, so. But, but everybody wants to come, and everybody, and, and, and my brother, he's ready. He's been ready, so I just, I just told him, I'll let you know when, when I'm ready, and then we'll go. Well, is she ready? She's always ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about, the thank you, sir. Let, let's talk a little bit about construction. So, All right. Baker, tell us a little bit about, you know, we have a full set of designs. We've got costing, you know, we're, we're having some challenges in terms of getting, bid process correct but uh, you know, show us what you got sure we have uh, this is a drawings here and good evening mayor council and, and citizens pleasure to see you and be here these are the mechanical drawings and this is just the as it is now you'll see where the bathrooms are split out We've got the columns and supports this is the back deck area uh, the front doors um, the concept was based on the requirements of Mr. Sanchez so what you'll see here is where I know it's difficult to see on the small Area, but you'll see you have uh, the restrooms will be moved over in this direction. So you'll have the restrooms all over here with the small office area. Um, pretty much everything structurally stays the same and intact, which makes it an easier build out. You've got the seating here. We're not showing the seating on the back deck. That will be up to him to come up with. But over here you have a basically the front kitchen area um, and then a, a production kitchen in the back, storage, a walk-in area. Uh, swinging doors over here. The windows he was speaking to was an idea that we came up with. We were talking uh, maybe a walk up area. What you see is a port pathway system here with another door add on, which would allow for deliveries to come in and go back directly to the storage and kitchen area. Uh, talk was to maybe extend that out where you could have a window in this general area right here for walk ups and to go orders and to facilitate <coughs> DoorDash and, and other delivery systems. So, that is, these are all. Just pretty much the same, it's just different mechanical implementations on it. But that's pretty much the overview of how the change would come into place that we're looking at doing. And we, we've got a cost number. We have two. Um, these aren't official ones, and that's why I want to defer this to the next council meeting. But you have uh, a, a gamut. You have one that's uh, 400, about 450,000, a little plus of that, a little north of that one, and then one around 275,000. Um, we'll be closing that out again here before the next council meeting and we'll be able to present that. Fi the final numbers and recommendation to you. All right. Questions um, from the council? Uh, Ms. Knight. Uh, yeah, Ms. Turner. So what is the reason why you the closing The close and open dates. We want to correct those on the RFP. Uh, I'm sorry? The close and open dates. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's just it's making more sense than what we were talking last time. Right. Like, so. I, I, I couldn't show you the pictures because we were segregated yeah. from being in there. Yeah, it make more sense if yeah. you have the whole thing on one side and the rest on the other side. Yes, sir. I, I, and I apologize for that, but we couldn't, we couldn't access base camp. So when we are talking about I couldn't pull up the visuals on it. But when you see the visuals, that's, where we're, that's kind of what we are talking about with that counter and everything. Good. This <laughs> 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 
Uh, do we have a, you know, like a time frame? Once we get started on that, what, what are you looking at? Well, it's going to depend on y'all and the, and the contractors. So. Well, I mean, if, if, once you... I would imagine in, in the talks with the two that have submitted and we may get a third submission, um, you know, this is this is inside, so it's not going to be dependent on the weather. So it'll be an inside reconfiguration and reconstruction. Biggest deal would be troughing out some of the uh, sewage lines because it is an, in the the sewage lines actually in the pad itself. So that it's just troughing that out and changing it over to accommodate the different things in there. Um, three to four months is what they have been saying. So depends, of course, you know, there's supply issues and things like that to look at. But those are prices are coming down and supply issues are are kind of diminishing a little bit, so hopefully not a big deal. There was a, like a, it was a, like the, uh, the, 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 the soil uh, contaminated, there was a conversation, I mean, conversation book before that, and then are we able to, to, to fix that and make this happen? Yeah, so the, the, everything that you're doing here is internal. Uh, on the outside in one of those buildings, that's where they, the property was originally an Exxon property, they had ground contamination. Um, and basically they cleaned that up to the level where the, the state considers it a clean site. Okay. Um, now, that doesn't mean you know, that you dig up your entire parking lot and do all these other things. None of the issues that we have are going to be right here in this little section. Um, I would leave the rest of it intact um, so that you know, we, we've got the ability if we ever need to go back to Exxon to dig there. So when there's no impact. There's actually a... Yeah, out this back, underneath that, under this porch. Santa Fe is right here, so it makes it. And there's a window there. If you just walked up to the building, and it's not a big window, it's at the top. You're just using that as your spot, because you know when you go in you have to cut your floor up a little bit, right there, you get that, plus your sink. And it's just going to go straight in here, right now. The rest of that doesn't change, because all of this is already existing. There can be some modification, but not a lot. There's another set of plans that it shows for the plumbing set. So, same thing as we see. There's a full set of plans here somewhere. Um, there's there's like there's there's we have all the different mechanical plans on here. I mean, there, this is not the plumbing plan, but uh, I've got all those here. There's somebody wants to look at it. You can't accommodate the, uh, uh, like, a uh, uh, drive-through window on the outside of the plumbing plan. I think the nomenclature of the bank on the back over there kind of. Well, 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 we can live with you know, do I, 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 I know, I know they would love to have a drive through window, but at some point it creates a traffic problem. So. It would be great, but then again, like I said, it goes back to originality, you know, the, where anybody that's tried that kind of food mm -hmm. knows that, hey, we have, there's a walk of window, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it's, just, it's just the way it is, like South Florida, and, you know, the, the Hispanic community, that's. You know, there's that little window. Everybody goes get the little cafecito and keep on going, go to work. You know that back door. You know, that back door could be set up so that that window in there is, you know. So there's a couple the windows and back doors that could be set out. And that goes, uh, you know, that way you can see and go. Right. Um, you know, and if they get in your way, just open the door. Hit the um, you know, but because that prevents you from having to do anything else. This is a cost number. It's, it's an easy number. It's everything simple. And the sidewalk's already there as well. Right, right. Um, as a matter of fact, right from there, there's the walk over to the other side of the um, But it'll work. I was looking forward to it. Um, other questions? Well, good. So, are the charging station stays? Yes. Just keep on charging station. Yeah. Well, I think he inherits that. <laughs> so, well, and, and ultimately, my understanding is when the school system builds their building, there will be a series of charging stations. Yeah, who's going to support them all? So, so they're going to work it out. So, Tesla. So, we won't be the only one in town. Yeah, it's more lecture, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, um, item, uh, the next item, of course, was recommendation to accept the uh, contract for professional probation services. We have an existing contract with them. It's a five-year contract. Correct. Do you want to review that now? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, last one was signed in October of 2017. The five-year expiration is coming up. Uh, they wanted to approach us a little early. If you look back on page 8 of the original contract, you'll see the original fee schedule. Um, on the corresponding page uh, at the end of the second, which is page 8 as well, on the new contract that they're requesting, really the only changes that you have are a $5 increase by the probation supervision crew, which is passed on to the probation and not us. And then there's a little change in some of the other fees just based on a cost assessment, nothing outrageous or 
out of line um, after speaking with the courts and the prosecutor and the judge. They're all happy with the, the company, so they would they recommend that we proceed with them. Um, they're very easy to work with. We have worked with them in their probation in the past. Um, they help us out here in the courthouse and then, or at the city hall, rather, and then also they help us out with uh, in some of our other outlying facilities with their probation work. So. Very easy to work with, and I would recommend that we uh, we approve this for the next five years. Questions, Ms. Knight? No question. Ms. Trent? I'm glad. Mr. Quark? No question. Ms. Steve? No questions. All good. Thank you. We still have an item here that references um, the Finance Committee findings, resolution, and cost of action on the sanitary waste company. Do you have any comments related to that, Ms. Knight? No comments. Ms. Train. We really have been discussing about this uh, matter, I believe, the, in the meeting prior to the last meeting. This was the last meeting uh, in September. I think the question was, do, do they exist? Because we also don't have them. I get left that answer to the city attorney, uh, the city manager who uh, is uh, operating this uh, city. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Do they exist or they do not exist? I, I didn't hear that. Do these records? I, I don't know if they do or not. I don't have any in my possession. Mr. Quaffin, comments? Uh, no comments. Ms. Dean. I do have a comment. Um, I don't think that I've heard any or had any information regarding the uh, report. Uh, this being a legal body that was dissolved, you know, in order to <coughs> dissolve a legal, legal body and close it out, we have no report on the findings, what, one way or the other. I think we need to close this committee out with your findings because you were the committee person and you uh, requested tons of data. So I think the council and the city deserves a report on what you found or didn't find. So that that is the situation. Otherwise, um, it's left with no reason for the committee. Mr. Mayor, you are also a member of the Finance Committee. Could you please respond to Ms. Council in um, concern? I can from my standpoint is I have no records. I have no report and certainly not a resolution. The, the cost of the action for the sanitary waste company in terms of that investigation that would be an action that we were having discussions with and there was a series of Excel spreadsheets and other types of things. Those, those were never, you know, things that I actually produced. I believe you do have those. If you don't have them, I know Han had some of those. So therein lies that question. So that's my information. Thank you. And uh, uh, let me recap what uh, were my response back in this uh, meeting in September that there wasn't any investigation as is where there wasn't any direct order from the council officially to direct the uh, committee to do any investigation. Uh, regarding the sanitation, the work was done by the city staff, and I do believe that the city had the information for that. And, uh, I do request the informa requested information, but the information that I request as well, general entry, which is how spending recording in the book with the accounting language, general ledger, cash register, all of them are um, spending record. And no information is out for the purpose of 
governance the budget as I am a member of the governance body which is the council. We set the budget and our job is that to governance the budget. Um, exactly. Exactly. So can we have a report on what you just said? The information were I do believe time to time. When I requested something, the answer automatically shared to among to the council members. So when the information gets to you, that would be up to you how you use that. When the information came to me, I read. And again, we have nothing in writing. Can we get a report? What kind of report do you want me to do? Well, I'm quite sure you're in finance. You know how to do a report. It is all finance. So I'm just saying we need a report to close out this committee to make sure that the council understood what was going on, what you found, and what you did not find. So a report in writing needs to be in the record. Um, and we stand it right now. The committee no longer exists. And as a council member, I don't have a responsibility to write a report to the council member. The information was shared among us. It will be up to each individual how do we read, how do we interpret the information. If I found something significant, I would like to share. Uh, some of the observations that I uh, saw was that the concern about the spending above $25,000. And I have requested um, the city manager to produce a report of all the spending above $25,000. And I never had the uh, report for that. Um, I also asked the uh, CFO, the former CFO, Chris Pike, when we was in one of the council meetings. I never got the answer of that either. So that's my observation so far. Continue, sure. Um, do we as the council need to? Um, ask for a vote on what we want to uh, have done in this situation, or? Not necessarily. Uh, the, our, I mean, we could have desires, but the, the one issue that we just can't get around outside of whether we agree or disagree is we have a formal request for an open record request related to the document. Either the document exists or the document doesn't exist. If we do not have it on a city computer, then it doesn't exist. Uh, if a member of this body has it in their official capacity, then it does exist, which allows us to ask the question, does it exist or does it not exist? If it does exist, we have to produce it. If you have a work product that is basically being used to potentially be able to produce one of those, that is part of the open record request. Either the work product exists, I do not have any in my possession, um, or it doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, we don't have to produce it. If it does exist, we do have to produce it. Therein lies the question. So whether it's the work product itself or a formal recommendation from a body, in this particular case, there doesn't appear to be a formal recommendation. Then the question, the next question would be, and that's an assumption I'm making that, but I've asked the question. Um, I'm assuming that the answer is no. Um, correct. Ms. Tran. <coughs> I would uh, answer the question. As at this point, I'm not in the position of finance committee, and um, okay. there wasn't any direction from the council during the existence of the body to do any investigation, and there wasn't any investigation at all. So again, the information that I requested <coughs> was to serve the only purpose is that Okay, let's, let's make this real simple. This isn't a deposition. Yes or no? The report exists? Yes or no? You know as much as I do, Mr. Mayor. My answer is no. I'm asking you what your question is. Yes or no? I really respond to the, uh, the question. All right, let's listen. 
let's take it to the next level. Right? Work product to be able to have somebody else look at it and produce a document. My answer is I have none. I've got um, in my possession that I don't know. Um, in your possession, do you have it? Yes or no? It's an open record request. I have to. We have to fill it out, whether we like it or not. Bottom line, yes or no. Mr. Mayor, I have a ready respectful answer to the question. Okay. Um. So, may I? city and for council members that did not were not privy to that information or did not go through that um, research of information I think that to do a report from councilwoman Tran stating what you found or what you did not find would be something to for their the record so that there are no questions as to the documents that you uh, reviewed, what were your findings? No findings, or you did have findings. What, what, what is your conclusion? And that only can come from you, it can't come from anyone else. Well, like I said, during the time of the existence of the committee, there was not any single meeting of the committee. There was not any uh, direction from the council to do any investigation. There was not any investigation at all. The information that I asked for, and I will continue to ask for that, is to build record to, is for, to serve the only function, which is budget governance. So there, at this moment, since there are no existence of the body, of what legal standpoint that I'm standing here, am I as a council being pushed by other council member to walk to do a report for to serve the purpose? If you would like to do so, you can ask the city to provide a general information. And the council member, like I said, I received the information uh, when I requested, and I do believe when no information were delivered to me at my request, is somehow being shared amongst the council as well as I am. I don't know if that was the protocol uh, or not, but so far, I only very much majority of the information that I requested the answer being shared. For the past almost three years, I rarely seen the answer from the city manager to other council. So I don't know what is the case, which is rather being having none of the council member ever ask for the city manager to generate any information or answer any question from the council by the email, or it just my case were different. Um, I, I don't know that we can compel any member of the council to, you know, create reports or whatever it is that they want. You know, we have respectfully requested the information. I, I don't know that I've heard a no. I certainly didn't hear a yes. Um, and that by itself is just, just a political dialogue, right? But everyone up here knows that we have formally been requested to have an open records question. Your city clerk is, is uh, the keeper of the records, has to answer the question. Either we have it or we do not. The information that you provided to us is not uh, either a yes or a no. It's somewhere in between. Okay? 
that. It's not hard. It's not a trick question. And I'm not asking the question. It's you know, a legal document that everybody's seen. You know, so you know, we'll have to address that differently. Um, I'm going to just leave it at, at the discussion as you stated it. And unless you want to fill in the blanks any further, um, if not, we're going to take that as your answer. Um, and we'll move on from there. Well, I'm a person related to that. I really respectfully give the full answer with this explanation. Okay. Um, Can I just one last comment? Go ahead. There was a committee formed. Am I correct? Yes, that is. Correct. Okay. All right, we're going to let that kind of ride. Um, our coffee is not as good as Mr. Sanchez's, um, and I'm not sure which country it's produced from, but it is in the back. It is hot. Um, there's some cream to go with it. She just went to make something. Oh, this one? Oh, my. This will be good. Um, okay. But uh, uh, the council meeting will start at 7.30. Uh, we know we have some people probably outside that door that might be friends and family uh, related to the officers that will have their officials swearing in. Um, so we'll all be on our fast behavior. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to take some pictures and have a good time. So we will see you at 730.